Yehova Malak Ola Molamat Yehova Malak Yame Rakis Yehova Gadol Makarian Theos Yehova Yadonai Yehova Elohim Kurios Theos Pantacreta Kurios Theos Pistos Elda et Yehova El Emuna Yehova I Basilian Kurios Otios O Pantacreta Basilios Basilian Kai Kurios Kurion Yehova the Bar Halal Elohim the Bar Halal Yehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura El Elohim Israel Isus Christos Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Kurion Numahagion Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos Kurion 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 Hagion 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 Gadol Gadol Gebura Pantacreta Yehova Ishmal Kam, Yehova Shamma, Yel Nakum Yehova, Yel Nakum Yapa, Natsak Israel, La Sheker, Gava Gava, Triambos Yehova, Jesus Christos, Ton Logan, Pantacreta, Numa Hagion, Numa Hotios, Mora, Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura Derek Emunabakar Mishfat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, using the privacy of our priesthood to confess our sins through to rebound, to realize and to understand that every breath we breathe in the great chance or the Lord's mercy on this earth, what we are in this great, it has to be like a great privilege or opportunity, in this great opportunity to be born in the church age, so that as many as been called to be led by the Spirit as the children of God, the adult sons of God. We have to wake up and understand this unique ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, in such a way that in comparison to the things of the world, as we noted yesterday, serving back the sun and the moon, considering them to be the gods. And also, the second category, what Job teaches over there in Job 31, in verse 27, he talks about hand and the mouth that would kiss his hand 
and secretly enticing his heart or making his heart to be the refuge of him. So here we look into these four categories. First one, the sun and the moon. And second, we have the heart and the hand. In this we look the origin of man, the man who has built for himself his own defense mechanisms as we could look and call as the word of Lord God goes to prove. In Psalms 115 in verse number 2, when they claim, where is your God? Our God is out of heavens. He is in the heavens. But what are the men? These are the men who have been made every ill. The things what we have noted, worthless things. The things which are nothing. So every ill is the point what we look that the things which are on the earth as described in Psalms 115 verses 3 and following, they are idols. As we look idols, and in my country, India, people may think we are talking about those idols. But here in Job 31.27, the idol, what we look, or in 1 John 5.18, when he said, My little children, be aware about, uh, be aware about the idols. He meant to say the teaching of man, anything what man can conceive, anything which man can think that it is the work of his own hand. In the same way, we find a difference between the revolution which is from heaven, the word of God, what we find, the God-breathed, theonustas, inspiration of the scriptures, and the comparison to the living over the dead, the comparison to the real over the idol. That's what we are trying to emphasize for you. We don't have any grudge about your idols, as the scripture says for us, that idol is nothing. We know very well Apostle Paul teaches that, because idol is nothing but the figment of the imagination of man's heart. And the imagination of his own thinking followed by his own will in order to work through his own hand. So here what we look, it is just the imagination of man. But for us, dear brethren, it is no longer the imagination of man. Since we serve the true living Lord of a God, we have the reality for us. And what is that reality? The infallible and inherent word of God, which has been revealed and kept for us to know, that man thinketh, sun is the extreme eternity, moon is the extreme light which rules the night. So the sun and moon will not end up. And since the sun and moon will not end up, they consider sun to be the Baal God, moon to be the asteroid god comparing them one will guide in the morning time and one will guide in the night time and all these things we read in comparison to the foolish enticement of their hearts the thinking of their mouth of men in the vigor and virality of the life as we read and noticed that these things are absolutely vain and vague. And what is reality? He says in Romans 8.16 Because he has given us to be led by Lord God the Holy Ghost, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. So this Holy Spirit of our Lord of our God, when it is guiding us or leading us, he says in verse 14, For all who are led by the Spirit of God, are sons of God. The, the Greek word over here is huios. It is not technon. Technon is what your graduation process goes on. But here he compares that to the process called to be huios, adult sons. For he did not receive the spirit of slavery so that you can once again fall back into the fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as with sons whereby you cry Abba Father because the Spirit himself beareth witness with our human spirit that we are the adult sons of God. 
so that he says brothers we are debtors but not to the flesh so that you think living according to the flesh is enough he says for if you live live according to the flesh you will die but if you by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live and the problem with us over here dear brother and much of the things where the translations have not given the true essence of that word in fact indeed they tried the best to get back into this languages but we have to go back into the original hebrew or greek called to be the white collar pastors because when the word says you shall live in romans 8:13 that meant to say in contrast to the teachings of sun and moon idols or whatsoever we have looked that your soul is been embraced in the realm of to get copulated with lies that's what we read yesterday in psalms in that chapter of 57 in verse 4 and there we read my soul you know he's talking about the soul and the will of god the father as per psalms 121 and 122 your soul shall be preserved from all evil because your soul doesn't have the teaching of christ so what do you do you make up your soul to be renovated anything that which you have the teaching in accord with the viewpoint of man lord god hates it that's as simple as that so the teaching of man secretly enticed by your heart secretly enticed by your hand is what men are trying to look men are trying to perform men are trying to get but the mind of christ is so clear and true it says no place for the teaching of man so that now your soul can control you can lead you according to the teachings of men and you think you have really got many things on this earth but the word of lord god is so crystal clear and pure for us to understand that there is no place for the teachings of men on this earth so dear brother when we find you shall live the word in the greek is zao because there are two kinds of life mentioned in the greek one is bios life as good as making to live in the flesh carnality looking upon the thinking of pagan kind of men who love to live a life of flesh but we are heavenly citizens we are called to be in the realm of kainaketesis our citizenship is of heavenly standards so we cannot live to give number one priority for the things pertaining to your bios life but when we live the ano called to be as high of philippians 3 the holy called to be as kadosh or hagios and the heavenly pleonoma which is called to be of this heavenly realm which apostle paul mentions the high calling of god the holy calling of god and the heavenly calling of god it refers all the time in our life the zoe the second life the life which you and i in christ have to enter every believer no longer to spend the time in drinking milk spending the time to make up his thinking in the realm of still having bread but it is the realm of making up your life to live as an adult son of god because as many as they have been led by the spirit of god they are called to be the children of god and in the church age the spirit why christ our lord our god has promised to give for us before his ascension as he said till i go back you will not get him when he comes the comforter he makes us to be the choicest wine the wine wherewith he could cherish and nourish 
the wine wherewith he could become. Like the great hills which cover the shadow, the light wherewith he further makes us to become the branches of sedar, kind of godly tree. Majestic, the word sedar, what they refer in the Hebrew. And we are no longer to be just consuming the water, water in the form of salvation, gospel, water in the form of indwelling, entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, neither water in the form of washing our sins. Day by day, Ephesians 5, 27 through 29, followed by Re Re Revolution chapter 22 in verse 14. Macarian people, blessed are they, because they wash, they do, he says, the word do, poeo. And it meant to say, to become independent existence of your own. They wash their clothes with the commandments of the word of God and they keep it white and pure. Washing requires water. It is no longer that we have been washed and kept and reached the status quo of Christos, conforming to the image of Christ. But in return now, we should become a branch of water. With every word we speak, it should become an inspiration of hope in the minds of the layer plants. So that it is not just giving them the crop of a water to the seed, but to make harvest of a water to be cut off. So that you can get them to look, harvest is plenty, laborers are few. And today if you have been called to be the children of God, we are talking about the living Lord God. We are talking about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are not talking about the idols, the secretly enticed of the hearts of men, which has been performed by the works of hand. We are not talking about them. We are not talking about the sun and moon. Because your heart will be easily deceived by looking into the integrity of the idols. Integrity of the idols in the sense of the moral way of life where they live. It is very pure and good. That's why we all the time say, unbeliever who is going to go to hell is far more superior than a believer in Christ. You know why? Because you are not following the teachings of Christ. But they, they are trying to live considering their gods and their mindset. The Satan has blinded them not to look upon this glorious gospel of Christ. They are able to live like the fig leaf kind of relationship, being good to each other, as Adam and Eve were good to each other, trying to live holier than the attitude. One would say, I'm better than you, I'm holier than you. And day by day, trying to do good works, great works, they think by living such kind of a great life, they could be easily saved. That's why an unbeliever is superior, but we Christians are inferior years, comparing to that moral standards of life where they live. Go and ask an unbeliever who is following the standards of these idols. Even women. When I witnessed one woman, early morning, four o'clock, five o'clock, she wakes up. She goes to the temple, round about seven rounds. In early morning, five o'clock, waking up, taking bath. That's the procedure. Afterwards, Finishing her prayer, she comes to go and make her work. And she said, I will not miss that even a single day. But we, though we have been asked to carry your cross every day, follow my Christ, you know where the standards of your thinking, live according to the demands of the true life, the Zoe life, not the life of Bios. You're not even equal to that woman who goes every day without fail, no matter whether it may rain or whether it may be too cold to take bath. With cold water, she takes bath and she goes on. That's the form of dedication they have. And they're really morally good. As the word says, pursue peace with each other. Try to stay good to each other. They perform that. The only thing is they know not the truth. The truth which is found for us in the word of God. 
because we should be the men who are shining before them because Christ our Lord our God has planted us to fill the earth by taking the deep root which the place he has, he has prepared before Satan that we are the choicest wine being bought out from the double straits of this world. But you know how we are going to despise your own wine? <laughs> That's the problem. Though you have been called to be the children of God, though you have been called to be the adult sons of Christ, you have been despised. And that's what we shall look after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. As many have been led by the Spirit of God, they are called to be the adult sons of God to the praise of His glory on this earth. And since we have been called to be the adult sons of God, we cannot be still kids. When we have been living, the when we are walking according to the work of the Spirit of God and making up our life according to the thinking of my Christ, the ultimate job for each and every believer is to act like an adult son, not just to act in the realm to work, but to live like an adult son, you know, natural, what it is, that's what you are. You cannot try to have the process like a hypocritical mask to think that you are adult son, but in return your thinking is not adult. That's the exact problem what we are facing today in our pulpits. Pastors are acting that they're really grown up, but in return they haven't grown up to look the serious call of my Christ. They are acting. They're like actors on the stage of this hypocrite who wear the mask of someone and come and stand. These are acting men, but in reality they are not. If you would look in reality, they are not really worth for Christ. But Christ our Lord our God calls your rank is an adult son. You cannot act like an adult son. You have to be an adult son. But the problem is you haven't even known that you are still tech non-believers in Christ. You are born to be disciples to the Lord. Asking a pastor, where are your disciples? How many of them could show these are our disciples? Truly grown up. Truly been mentored over to the teaching of Christ, to the thinking of Christ. You know, Christ our Lord our God gives you enough of grace to become the choicest wine of His glory. To produce the thinking of my Christ to the highest standards. And that if you reject that grace, you are going to be in the realm of depending to secretly entice your heart and to depend upon your hand. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and learn the mind of Christ after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of Lord to learn the word. What else do we have on this earth, O oh Father, to cherish and nourish, to become your choicest wine? Wherewith you have done, as you ask the question, what more can I do for this? You have done much more than the most for us. Yet, O oh Father, because of the way of hypocritical mask of life, these men are living on this earth, not even equal to the morality of unbelievers. They have been losing out your gracious plan. They have been led astray, not knowing the truth. And yet, O oh Father, you have come up with grace to teach us the importance of this life, so that we could become your choicest wine and produce for you much more fruit, wherewith you shall be glorified through our lives. So, Father, we are thankful for this great mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, who constantly maketh us to enjoy the real life, the true are our life, so that being well qualified, no longer to be entangled once again into the yoke of the bondage of sin of this earth, but rather to wake up and to realize and to understand that we are the new creation in Christ, and being called to be the new creation in Christ, we shall no longer live the life of sin, but rather make up our lives to live according to thy glory. 
So, Father, as we study the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in every past, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and to challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. The word Zao, in difference to the Bios, it teaches to us that it is the life which is being designed by God the Father so that we are having the manner of life or to have the worthy of that name and represent Lord's will as we live not only on this earth even to the standards of the heaven as we go by. So dear brethren, here we find the word to understand that this great word of Zao which teaches to us it says that the life that we are living now which is the real and genuine. It is the great life of Logos, that is the Word of God, which will be a life of vigorous activeness, devoted to God. In such a way, the word devoted meant to say, you so beyond to Christ, that we are blessed in the portion, not only on this earth, even the world to come because we put on Christ. And since we put on Christ, at the time of resurrection, we will be consummated by new ascensions, by having a more perfect body which will last forever. So the Zao kind of life, the people that which the word of Lord God demands, if you are living that life, if you are making up your life on that, you fear not about the second death. You'll have your part in the first resurrection. You will not fear about the second death. So the word what we look when he says, Mortify the deeds of your flesh in Romans 8.13 And we shall no longer live according to the standards of this flesh, but live according to the Spirit. He's mentioning to live this great life, the Zao life, the true life, the real life, the enjoy that which is active, vigorous, having to look your part, not only now, even in the futurity to come. In such great futurity of this life, what you're going to live on this church age. He says you are sure that you will be consummated by the new dimensions, the new ascensions, and you are a great one to have a part in the resurrection body. Such kind of a life is what Christ our Lord of our God is mentioning. We are no longer here to live a life what we call to be the sin unto death. Because the flesh, if you are living according to the flesh, you are reaping death. You are reaping corruption. And flesh is what we look, the human viewpoint. The plan what we have for every believer in Christ or everyone in Jehovah, in Psalms chapter 80 verses 8 and following what we are looking, the first four verses talk about the great purpose of the Lord. And from there on, beginning with verse number 12, and the remaining two verses, the way how they have been destroyed. And here we have to, we have to insert our thinking to understand why and how they have been destroyed. Because in verse number in verse number 11, when we look, he says, You shall be like the streams of water, and you shall be for the tender plants, or the one which are layer plants. That means you will be like a water which could be given like for the crop, for the harvest. Harvest water, the only water which could be collected and kept. And today for every believer, you are like that collection of water which could be used for many people whenever you saw the word of God which is the right mind of Christ but devil all the time like a roaring lion it's waiting to take away from you the word of God 
because first of all no renovation of the standards of your thinking and when you fail to renovate the standards of your thinking you will be not making decisions according to the will of God because as a man thinketh so he goes and if he knows not the true purpose of life to be like the true wine for God if he doesn't understand that purpose of life if he doesn't realize that meaning of life so quite obviously now he loves to depend his life entirely and purely in the realm of thinking what he has been fed in his mind so if he doesn't know that he has to be as the will of God the mind of God the glory of God by the word of God if he doesn't learn that if he doesn't understand that quite obviously now he will be driven he will be driven according to the lusts of this flesh and in his vain imagination replacing the truth he thinks the life what he has been living is really correct that's the reason what we find over here in psalms chapter 80 the first four verses from verse number 8 what we look over here he says that called you out from egypt to be the choicest wine to me and from there on he has eradicated the teachings of the heathen every ill kind of teachings are no longer applicable for you you are no longer going to look upon the reasoning as they are going to be in the heaven or in the earth what the way how they are the sun and the moon the heavens what we have the three heavens we are talking about the environment we are talking about the stellar spaces so your reasonings is not depending upon that but in return now your reasonings have to be completely dependent upon the one who resides in the third heaven which is called for us the mind of Christ so dear brethren since you have been given that great privilege in Christ you are no longer to live or to make up your life on the basis of the thinking of man you are no longer to be there because he said he has bought us as a choice choicest wine and he has bought us out of the egypt and he has casted us out of the heathen that went to say no longer to have the influence of the teaching of heathen and he has planted it you know the wine what he bought he has planted it we read that philippians 16 colossians 16 taken the root it goes on to further improve he has planted today if you don't learn the importance that your mind has to be filled with the word of god you're really not the one you're really not the zoe kind of life you're really not the sons of god every believer should be taken up his life in the realm being controlled by the word of god if you don't learn the importance that you have to be controlled by the word of god then for sure dear brother you have to realize that you are still under the influence of heathen so he says the work of the parents which he has given in proverbs 1 and verse 8 father will musar discipline mother will teach thora the law they will be like the wreath of grace around your neck they will be like the ornaments of necklace around your neck the wreath of grace around your head to be like the crown and around your neck necklace so that you shall not be enticed by the way of sinners so the first root why you're forgetting that you have been planted in the thinking of Christ is your parents the parents who have failed to teach to you the fear of the law they love to make puppies but they don't love to make you to become the sons of god and they do not know why they get married they do not know why they want to have a progeny so what god says in malachi 2:14 they don't understand they think as if it is a age so that he can get a progeny so that he can live behind a mark the same thing for every believer who is born again in christ 
God the Father, when he says none to be perished, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. These are the people who will carry the name of the genealogical line to the next generations. As we love to have the thing pertaining to a male child so that he can carry the progeny to the next generation. So God the Father in his grace at every time he looks the standards of his progeny. Every time you have been born again in Christ, he looks at least this guy will keep up my name. This guy will make up my name to shine. This guy will keep <coughs> that we are really the true Christians for Christ. But the problem with us is the men haven't known why they're getting married, why they should have the progeny, which Christ our Lord our God has said long back, he has bought us to be the choicest wine of him. And that choicest wine of him, what he has said, to cast out the teachings of heathen and to plant in the teachings of Christ. And he has planted it. He said he's not going to plant. He has planted it on this earth. And he has root out the teachings of worthlessness, hedonic standards of life. He has casted it out. And what a sad thing it is for us to note. Today our pulpits are still talking about the worldly standards. They haven't gone to, dill, to drill, to dig and to take the word of God. The pastor teachers have failed in their work. Dear brethren, your bios kind of life will destroy not only you, because he said in James 3, 1, you will have a terrible punishment. Writing to Timothy, he says, be pure to the doctrine, you will save yourselves and you will save the ones who are hearing you. Since you are not pure, since you are not going on to look into the exegetical standards of the word of God, you're destroying the flock and they were making them to live or to reside yet into the bios kind of life, biological way of life. And biological way of life doesn't have eternal life. The illustration between Abraham, the rich man, and Lazarus. The rich man says, Father Abraham, that meant to say he's a believer. He's belonging to that same genealogical line. The same thing today you should learn. You may be thinking that God the Father has promised us to have eternal life, eternal life in the realm of Zao. That eternal life, as he said, before the foundation of the world, the way how he has prepared and kept for good works, the way how he has prepared us to sit with equal essence with, with Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Ephesians 2, 6 and 7, because he is the blessed Lord God. You lagete. And since he has made us to be, he has taught us to make up our life to live in the standards of Zoe. God the Father, when he says the word everlasting life, eternal life, the life what he has promised for us, the life what he has been teaching for us is Zoe kind of life. It is not Bios. But since your parents have failed to teach your children to learn that word from your pastors from the pulpits, you're destroying the generations. But every time God the Father has a hope, a hope upon the things pertaining to the couple, at least these people will be a faithful witness like Elizabeth and Zachariah to have a son like son of the son like John the Baptist. Because he was a priest, he was doing his work over there, and we also find the standards of his word, which go on to teach that he constantly and consistently did upon the teachings of the work of the Lord. And that's what today you should look into the reality of the word of God. So he has constantly taught for us, godly parents, now the first marriage, Adam and Eve, they went wrong. And that's the problem with us. When the first marriage went wrong, he's still waiting to get at least one couple who could be fulfilling according to the demands of the word of God their life. And afterwards we look and we consider, it is not just that one couple, later on slowly we find like 
certain couples who went along to be good for God, thinking of God. And later on we also find that after that couple, individual believing souls like Apostle Paul who could come to be the witnesses who could carry this burden to the next generation, who could be the great joy for Christ to carry this into the next generations. But in return we find, as you love to have your progeny, the reason you get married to say your progeny, so that he can take hold of your name, so that he can have the genealogy of this name. And in all of these things you will understand that how well the progeny is being needed for you. But here Christ our Lord our God also is in search of progeny. The progeny what we look and consider to be as the one who would shine like light luminaries on this earth. He planted, he has established this divine order before the foundation of the world what every believer ought to be in Christ. You know, dear brethren, it is not like the secrecy of your heart or the works of your hand so that you can say this is God and worship it. That's what we find a great discourse for us in Isaiah 44. He says he, ch he chops the tree, makes it into four parts. One is going to use for fuel, one is going to use for his tent, and one is going to make up an idol and he says, go down and worship to it. So he says, no, this is not God. So as long as you are failing to realize that we have been planted in the word of God and word of God has to be given to our children. And as you look upon for your progeny, so Christ our Lord our God is looking upon the person who could go on for the next generation by standing in the gap for Christ. That's what he says, when I have searched out, there was no one to meet me in the hedge, in the gap to fill up the hedge. Today we are able to find the same thing as you have a desire to have your progeny. In the same way, God the Father is having a desire upon every believer who believes in Christ that through him the name of my Christ will be shined on this earth. And don't worry the people who have lived such kind of a zoe life. The life in the fear of the Lord. The real life to be vigor and valor of Christ. Having a blessed portion not only on this earth, even in the heaven to come. So that they are not ashamed to found Christ to be the only way of life. They are already there. Don't worry. He has the men who have done the work, who are doing their work, who will do their work again in the future. Because as we look upon Elijah claiming he is the only one, but he says there are more than 7,000 for me. The same man, a God, he knows who were the people who did make the name of my Christ to shine and who were been in the realm of Revelation 21 4 witnessed for Jesus Christ and the one who had been martyred for the word of God. He knows very well. Now what we have to look as we are considering to have our progeny Christ our Lord our God wants you to be the progeny for the Lord. The one wherewith he could relax and say have you seen my servant like Job? The one what Satan could say in the sons of Sceva, Acts chapter 19. Jesus Christ I know, Paul I know, but who you are. Recorded the witness before God, the heaven to be like Job. On the earth, in the prince of the power of this air, the enemy territory, what we're going through. In the mind of Satan, like Paul. There like Job, here on earth like Paul. That's the progeny. That's the work which Christ our Lord our God has bestowed upon us in giving us this great grace. Day by day coming up and giving us this new life. We don't deserve it. We don't work for it. We don't earn it. Yet he has come up to give you. Why? Because he has already casted out the teachings of heathen. And if you're still applying your life to heathenic way of life, he says, after verse number 11, being a choicest wine, getting you out of the Egypt by that we meant to say the clutches of Satan delivering you out from the thinking of Satan so that you will no longer be slave to the flesh but slave to Christ or slave to the Holy Ghost which indwelleth in you 
He has delivered out when he is using the word. He has bought the wine out of Egypt and he has casted out heathen and planted it. And you know what all he did? He prepared room before it. And he did cause to take a deep root in it. And he has filled the land. So that the hills are covered with the shadow. You know, the hills being every believer, like the standards of the word of God, covering no matter whatever may be the pressure, they will become scribes. Shadow, no matter what, the constant theme is to go and make disciples of all the nations. And the branches thereof are like the cedars of which call to be majestic gods. And why these are called to be the majestic ones? The reason is very simple, dear brother. Why they are called to be majestic? Because 410 code, which has been applied over here in the Hebrew strong code number, it refers to like the mighty man, or we call the word mighty God. Because in 410 code, as John 1035 teaches, scriptures cannot be broken. To whom the word of Lord God came, they will become gods. Because gods are the sources of showing the path. As Paul and Barnabas were been witnessed by the demon, which, which was been used by enticing them to deceive them. And she said, these are the men who show the ways of God. In the same way, we now have to be witnessed on this earth that these are the men who show the ways of God because these are the branches of Christ, like the wine wherewith they have been given the word of God and they have this power to show for others the right way of God. So the word 410, why it has been used over here, it meant to say for us, every believer to whom they have been understood that they should be under the hill covered to be the shadow, and they have to look that they have been given by the grace of God day by day to take root upon root, deep root upon deep root, and fill the land by preparing room. Because Christ our Lord our God has already prepared room and given for you. You may be thinking, how it's possible for us tomorrow to gather the word of God. But Christ our Lord our God has already prepared for you to have in that particular day the room to gather in the word of God. Or the space or what you call the opportunity to redeem your time, two hours, 40 minutes for that particular day, each and every day. He has already prepared. Therefore, he says, enough is the evil you have for that particular day. Do not worry what you're going to eat, how you're going to eat. That's the pagans think of. And since the way how you are going to be destroying your work tomorrow by not concentrating on the word of God, he says, I've already prepared room for you. You should make up your time for it. And since he has made that room, prepared that room, causing us to take deep root, he wants us to be like the branches of a godly, majestic ones on this earth. And he hasn't just made a root or a deep root or prepared a room, but he says, be filled, filled, filled. Filled in the land. He has already filled it in the land. Everything has been done, dear brethren. That's what we said for you. No contest between us and the fallen angels. No contest what we read between 2 Corinthians 6 verses 14. Therefore he says, be perfect, 2 Corinthians 7 1. Give upon your time to the word of God and be perfect. Because there is no contest. What contest could be between living and the dead? No contest. We are simply spending our time to think we could be in the realm of the soul to control us and we are making our life to be held by being controlled by the soul. But for us we are called to rule by the spirit. If you have been ruled or controlled by the spirit, there is no contest with the soul. That's why he says, he has casted out the teachings of heathen. He has planted us. The duty of the parents to teach to your children. Because he has prepared before our enemy day by day to gather the word of God. That's the point, dear brethren. He has prepared place before the enemy. And in such a way he has prepared to take not just root, but deep root. And having the deep root, it is the sense every day we come to gather the word of God. And what is that deep root? 
as we look in second corinthians 3 moving on to glory on to glory making up our life glory to glory that's the deep root and today people are not worried about to take deep root Therefore, that's the reason why we illustrated about that woman where every day morning she wakes up taking water in the cold bath, she goes to her temple and she doesn't miss that work. But here, though we have been said, carry your cross every day, follow my Christ, we know where the standards of your thinking. We don't have enough time to take deep root. Do you think we have any time? No, dear brother, you're not having time to take deep root. But Christ says he has prepared place before the enemy and why he has prepared the place before the enemy to teach them that it is no longer the will of yours to reign but it is the will of Lord God the Father to reign in you. That is the example we learn from Christ our Lord our God who said not my will O Lord but thy will be done. But Satan in its will, five times in Isaiah chapter 14, the pride of it, I will be like this, I will do that. You know, it is the will, no longer our will, it is the will of God the Father. We have to be just sanctified, being sanctified in Christ day by day, being preparing ourselves to be to the fit for the Master's use. So he has prepared and kept for us the space for that particular day before Satan. So that it is not just to come and to give you a lip service, but it is what we look to give your day by day growing up to maturity. No longer to be in the realm of Hebrew 6 1 or 2, but going on to become perfection, 2 Corinthians 7 1. So that you could understand is no longer the Bios kind of life that you execute on this earth, but it is the Zoe kind of life being led by Lord God the Holy Ghost. Because he has done all these things, that's the reason he prayed in John 17 4. They have kept thy word. He uses the word past tense because already he has made and prepared in the past tense for us. In Psalms chapter 80, we are the choicest wine of the Lord. Getting us from the clutches out of Satan, Egypt meant to say the world, and the prince of the power of this world, Satan, when you believe gospel by faith alone in Christ alone, he has removed you out so that now you have to remove out the teachings of heathen from your mind, which is the human viewpoint, and you have to plant in the teachings of the word of God. And since you have called to plant in the teachings of the word of God, you may think it is difficult for you. He says, I've already prepared place before the enemy, don't worry. He has prepared not just to take and take the root. He says, take deep root and fill the land. Don't fail, but fill the land. He says, when you're filled with the land or the land with the word of God, he teaches the hills shall be covered by the shadow and you will be the branches of that great majestic God small g o d for 410 code and every believer to whom the word of lord god comes he says in john 10 35 they will be called gods why because you have the truth you have the power you have known the word of god and you know what will be after the death of this man if they don't believe in christ you know very well the fate of the men who are believing in christ yet not becoming to use their life to the will of God and to the work of God rather than using their own life for themselves as the rich man was been told by Abraham you while living on this earth you spent for your own will you did not live to the will of God the Father so that's very simple for unbelievers not knowing the gospel for believers first the judgment not getting acquainted with Christ because you believers if you would know the will of God and the work of God and the power of God getting acquainted with Christ you would be in return making others to know as gods as the branches of majestic gods you would make them to understand we are the water points for you Remember the need of water when Samson cried out, Bokim. 
because they constantly had the realm of being pierced by that enemy. Now he cries out and guard the father with the skull or the jawbone of an ass, dividing asunder in that he puts a water hole so that he can get water. Remember water. When he killed and Hakora in that incident, in the midst of this Bokim kind of people. And God the Father gave water. And Hagar, when she wanted water, crying unto the Lord, who looketh into all things, provided water. And we look in the Bible for the people of Egypt, uh, for the people of Israelites coming out from the Egypt. Bitter water experience, becoming sweet water by putting into the plant. That's what the branch again, cutting the branches of Mamre they put, the water became sweet. Again, the water to hit the rock once, to speak the rock once. You know, without water, it's not possible, right? In fact, you need our body has been there with one third of the water. So 60, 70 percent has been with the water, that's what they say. So, dear brethren, the earth where we survive, one part of the land and three parts of the water. In the same manner, you should understand the importance of becoming the live streaming of water. It is not just that we have taken the importance of just being fed in the water, a gospel to be the water, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost to be the water. But now the water is what you have to become to others. So that's the fourth part of the verse, what we look. So in everything what we understand in Psalms chapter 80, before the foundation of the world, he has chosen us to be for him holy and blameless, so that we could be presented before God the Father, Colossians 1, as we read, verses 18 and following, to be holy, blameless, and agnacetas in Christ. Irreproachable. No blame inward and outward. Why? Because the procedure, what we look, first he said, he has casted out the teachings of heathen. You are no longer into the terms and conditions of the soulish way of life. You are no longer into the realm of this rational or empiricism kind of man. You are no longer into the teachings where men would think, if sunlight is there, that is God. If moon is there, that is God. No, you are no longer into the creation kind of thinking. You are into the creator kind of thinking. When he has chosen you, be thankful that he has erased out from you all mannerism of men's viewpoint. You know, that's the reason we have over here for us, dear brother, in Psalms 121. He says over here for us to understand the importance as such how he has placed us. He says in Psalms 121 in verse number 7, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. The word preserve is called to be shamer. And the word shamer meant to say, your thinking process, your munching process in your blood which directs you, he is going to give to renew what you had according to the demands of the word of God. That's as simple as that, dear brother, whether you believe it or not. The word Shamer, what he's going to do is teaching like custody. That he has surrounded us. You know, every believer, if you would look, dear brother, in 1 John, when he writes in chapter 5, Satan, the evil one, cannot even touch you. Because now you are the property of God. You're such kind of a great property of Lord God. He says he has bought with a great price. Therefore, he warns us to use your body for your own no, he says, this body is not your own, but rather glorify Christ in your body through the Spirit. So in each and everything you look, we have been surrounded by the wall of fire. We have been told, you have been indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Ghost, so that it is no longer the teaching of men that could reign in you. There is no chance, dear brethren, if you have the teaching of men being inculcated in you. It is what you are putting it by your own will. You know, that's the thing what Satan did to Adam and Eve. She went along to influence the teaching. The desire of the flesh ruling over the spirit. 
making the mind, heart and will to be absolutely out of the control of God. So here also we find the same thing what Satan does in your life. To get out of that custody, to get out of that great word of God, what we find Shameh. In Philippians 4 he teaches that the peace of God garrisons your heart. The word garrison or over there, guard, the same thing over here, shamir. Custody, what is that peace? The peace of God is what you have. First, reconcile to the Creator. You know, what a great privilege to be reconciled to the Creator. And then as we have been reconciled to the Creator, walking and doing the will of God according to the demands of the Word of God. In the past, he says in the Hebrew, chok, the prescription demands. In the present, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So in both ways, when we fulfill, as we look again in Ephesians 5, Arise awake, that that sleepeth, Christ will shine upon you. Look upon the great demands of the word of God. Redeem the time. Look upon the great demands upon the word of God. Acrobos. The prescription demands of the word of God. What they want you. If you do that, you will have the peace of God. And that peace of God will garrison your hearts. And there is no way any evil. There is no way anything that could go further against that peace of God. So he has garrisoned. You know, these things he has done and kept for us. First he has chosen you to be the wine. He has brought you out to look that it is no longer the teaching of heathen to influence you. The teaching of rationalism or empirism, the teaching of the fear of men as the way they look upon to understand this body in the realm of your sicknesses. You know, your sicknesses is because you haven't fulfilled the commandments of God. You have failed to better use your time and grace given by God for the work of the Lord. You have failed, you have invested in the world and since you have invested those things into the world, God the Father is paying you back with sickness. So now at least you have the time to recover. Because you have been preserved, you have been garrisoned, you have been put into custody. Satan cannot even touch you. There is no way you can destroy the peace of God which shall garrison your heart. Until and unless first you fail to get reconciled with Christ. You know as Christ our Lord our God said, no one can tell on this earth. He said, the peace I have with me, no one can give you in this world. And people foolishly, arrogantly, they may try to go against the word of God because we believers are not able to endure as a choicest wine planted and producing the branches of water in return going on making the layer plants to be with the water of the word of God and to grow up and to become the mind of Christ to this people. Since we have failed, the teachings of the word of God are not shining out. They haven't been transformed. They haven't been given as the father goes on to pass down the property to the children. And now before he could die, he would write upon his will. And he goes on to say, this is for my daughter. This is for my son. This is for X, Y, Z. In the same manner, the parents are not passing down to the children. The necessary discipline in the word of God. Since they haven't given that necessary discipline in the word of God, they forgot that they have been garrisoned, they have been in the custody. Because the Lord shall preserve. He puts a custody. He puts a process wherewith there is no way you can endure your life in lies or in sin. There is no way, dear brother, whether you believe it or not, it's not at all possible. When we are in the peace of God, because he said, there is none on this earth that can give you the peace what I have in John 14, 27, and no moron could give you that promise on this earth. And since you haven't known first your Bible well in the Hebrew and Greek, you're searching peace for men or in men having to get yourself reconciled to be good to each other. 
to think that if you have this, if you achieve this, if your depths are cleared, you'll have peace. No, dear brethren, be thankful to God. First, your mortal sins or in the sense of your eternal sins have been quenched by Christ. He has garrisoned you there first. And now he has kept you in test. So that the real branches of the olive tree shall be cut off, he said. In the same manner, now your real way of life will be tested. Whether you are going to live a life of bios or you are going to live a life of zao. If you are trying to live a life of bios, though you have been reconciled with Christ, you will be like the rich man who lived who was been told by Abraham, who lived for his own life, who lived for his own lust, who did not do the will of God the Father. And since he has lived his own life, his destiny is hell, into the eternal lake of fire. So it is. And if I have been known what is the purpose of life, he says, for the ten talented he made ten, for the five he made five, so will be your life. You will not be like that one talented person who digged and kept that in the soil. Even that one who has been digged and kept in the soil, he was been said to cast into the lake of fire. So, the day when you have been reconciled with Christ, having peace of God in Christ, the logic is very, very simple. Since you have been reconciled with Christ, since you have been called to be with Christ, the remaining part of your life you have been tested. But those who come and fulfill the choke prescription demands of the word of the Lord, those who come and look upon the acrobat's demands of the word of the Lord. You know, dear brethren, they have true peace. They have this preservation. They have this shamer. Not every knucklehead who think who is in Christ, who has been surrounded by much money, property, wealth, you know, all the name and fame, he doesn't have peace of God. The one who fulfills or meets or executes the demands of Lord God, he will have peace. He will have the preservation. No evil. And people don't understand. They think they can go to the one who is a necromancer, who is a witchcraft, who think with the power of the Holy Spirit he has cleansed your sicknesses and try to give you great witnesses. Because he was sick, he is now good, he is doing good. No, dear brother, not at all. The word of Lord God gives you, first to edify in the mind of Christ, have peace with God, no evil. He will preserve you. Can't you understand in the case of Elisha, when he said, open up the eyes? In 2 Kings 6, 16 and 17, he said, they that are with us are greater, are more than they that are with them. Can't you understand in the case of Job when he was being put to test, he said to Satan, you shall not go to touch his soul. You shall not infiltrate his soul. Because they are having the peace of God. They are enjoying the mind of God. And those who enjoy the mind of God, they will become like the weeping prophets. They will turn out to become the iron prophets for God. Because today, much of the present Christendom, which has been apostatized, which is living the life of a lie and not the truth. And since much of the Christendom, where there is no proper teaching, the word says, day by day come and learn the word of God, day by day understand the mind of Christ, day by day graduate, because these are the prescription demands of the word of God, dear brethren. Those who don't meet or match the prescription demands or the acribos, what are the demands of the word of the Lord of a God, for sure, dear brethren, forget about them, to have peace in their life. Having not a right and true fellowship with God, that's what how Zacchaeus came back. Upon the sugan tree, what we read, the ripe tree, the ripe tree could be like the right mature word of God being taught in the church. He comes back to his mind in his consciousness and he says, I will pay back four times. The same thing we need to pay back now, not just 10 out of 10, but we have to make out of 10, we have to make 40. Out of 5, we have to make 20, four times, we read that. And when we have failed to do so, no peace, no shamir. 
And since you are not fulfilling the prescription demands, you search for human solutions. You go for witchcraft. You go for all mannerism of lies on this earth. And you constantly spend your life in search of making your dependence on what we call frantic search of happiness or having your defense in the realm of what we call a refuge in this sun and moon kind of life in the realm of your own heart and the works of your own hand and you search for your human solutions you will not be in the divine guidance of the word of God you will be all the days of your life in search, in search, in search of peace. You know, people may have a lot many things on this earth. But they say, we don't have the peace. How could you get peace? Do you think you can go and buy it in the market? <laughs> you can get peace only when you fulfill the prescription demands of the word of the Lord. He's going to guard you. And he said, in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, perfect peace they have, whose eyes are stayed upon the Lord who keep constantly the thinking upon Christ because Christ our Lord our God said there is none who can give you like this way of peace which I give on this earth because he preserves you from evil and he preserves your soul that's what we need to look the first thing what he teaches us is that he preserves your ways from evil because he has casted out the teachings of heathen. So here, dear brethren, he says first, He shall cover, the Lord shall preserve, Jehovah shall make it up to the standards of what we call as preserving. And what does he preserve? He preserves first our life, our soul, from the evil ways of thinking. And that's what today, men are not able to understand the realm of casting out the teachings of heathen in our life. Much of the Christendom has completely failed to understand what is the teaching of this reality, what we could look, as the word says, to be lies. Since they haven't come out, they are still in the teachings of evil. And that's the great problem what we face on this earth. They want peace. They want to be in the realm of life which they think is good and true. But in reality, they will not have that peace because their life is still evil, evil to the core. So the Lord will preserve, he said, the first point. He is going to preserve us from where? From all evil. And what is that evil? Dear brethren, the logic is very simple. We look upon the word evil as ra-ra-a. And the word ra-ra-a, unpleasant, disagreeable, that which is absolutely wrong. You know, this word evil, meant to say distorted kind of thinking twisted kind of thinking. The thinking which is not clear. You know you can have clear thinking only under the guidelines of Lord God, the Holy Ghost controlling you. The Lord shall preserve you from evil thinking. Distorted kind of thinking. In the incident of Cain and Abel, if Cain wouldn't have led by the lust of the flesh called jealousy, He would have been preserved if he had his shamer or the word what we look, his thinking to be purely by the word of God, the fear of God. Maybe he wouldn't have been, not had a mark upon his head and be led out from that land. 
So what made him to go out of that? Distorted thinking, evil thinking. And distorted thinking, what we look? There, no fear of God, no love of brother. Having a jealousy that he's sacrifice was not, was not accepted not it was out of the blood but by faith so your life is also now given sacrifice but not in faith it has become a distorted kind of your sacrifices to God but you're thinking you're really doing good things no it's a distorted thinking in the distorted thinking, you think weekly ones coming to the church is enough. In that evil way of thinking, you think monthly ones you come and pay the tithes is enough. But you're forgetting every day you have to carry a cross and no peace to the wicked, says Lord God long God. Though cry out, though the false men cry out peace, peace, peace. But he says no peace. Therefore he says, hear O earth, O earth, O earth, the manifold word of God. No peace. Because your thinking is not into the righteousness of the demands of the word of God. Your thinking doesn't match the uprightness of the word of God. So what do you have? Distorted thinking. And since it's a distorted thinking, dear brother, you have to be knowing, to be preserved. You need to renovate the standards of your thinking in Christ. So the word Shamer, which he teaches to us, it's a day by day growth of renovating the standards of our thinking in Christ. And since he has said, he has already casted out the teachings of heathen, it's a great and unique privilege for us to know that we have been shamir, we have been guarded. There is no way the influence of Satan could be upon your life. There is no way the thinking of distorted standards to be in your life. So the point and the logic is very clear, dear brethren, for us. There is no way you can have the distorted thinking in life to be number one priority. But yet the men on this earth, they are thinking that distorted thinking is enough. But the Lord shall preserve, because he has already casted out the hedonic way of style. Because we are the choicest wine, and he said, we shall get acquainted with the Lord. We are the choicest wine for the Lord. And since we are the choicest wine of the Lord, in his grace, in eternity past, he has planned us, he has planted us to give this word of God. And we could be free from the distorted thinking of Satan. So he said he has casted out the heathen. And he has planted what? He has planted us the right word of God. Therefore he has preserved us from every evil way. But the problem with us is you haven't been rooted up to look that you are far away from the every, every evil way of this life. Like Cain, you are still thinking to give your sacrifices, which are not by faith. If you walk by faith, you will also live by faith. And since you are living and walking by faith, it's the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in your life. That's how the things are happening. And since they haven't been lived by faith or walked in the Spirit, they constantly have in their life distorted thinking, dear brother. That's how simple the logic is. But Lord shall preserve by casting out the heathen. And the reason why we are telling this, dear brother, is very simple. The choicest wine what he has planted. The necessary things, what more he can do than this? He has done great things than that. In the church age, giving Lord God the Holy Ghost. In the past, for them teaching for everyone who has been before the foundation of the world, as John 1 12 says, these are the people who have been born by the will of God, not by the will of blood. And have, and have been given exclusive authority to become the sons of God. 
So since they have been born by the will of God, they have been done by the will of God, He has planted your life to be well preserved. He has preserved it in such a way. First is He has cast out the teachings of heathen. Get planted in, get rooted into the mind of Christ. So that I have prepared every day the place before your enemy on this earth, day by day together in the word of God. I have prepared the place and kept for you. And now since I have preserved and kept the place for you, day by day, you have to go on to take the deep root. And you have to fill the land. You have to fill up your teachings. You have to fill up the mind of Christ by your way of life, by the living exhibition of Christ. Because you are called to be the hills which cover the shadow. You are called to be the branches of a majestic ones. You are called to be the water points for many new plants to come up. But what went wrong? You haven't been preserved. Or you haven't made up your soul to be preserved by the word of God. You know, that's what we find the word when he says, season with salt. If you're not seasoning it with salt, the meat will get destroyed. The same thing to season with salt. If you're not inculcating to your flesh the word of God, the salt representing the mind of Christ, your body gets rotten up. And the Lord says over there in Psalms 121 in verse 7, He shall shamer your, your life from every evil way. He shall preserve you from all evil way. And he shall shamer again preserve your soul. And the point what we look upon the soul, it meant to say, dear brother, no way you will have him and the point of thinking in it. He has preserved us and kept. He has made up our life to the standards of such great truth in this earth. Having such kind of a life in us, he says, you have to cast out the teachings of heathen. But what has happened? Coming back to Psalms chapter 80, he says over there in verse number 12, Why have you broken down her edges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck? You know, the word, why have you broken down, the word broken down, meant to say, dear brethren, called to be in the Hebrew, parats, to breach out. And the reason why he has breached out, your hearts are continually evil. Right from the youth he has seen, he says in Genesis. He repented why he made man. That their hearts and the thinking do not match to the thinking of Christ. They're constantly evil, continually evil. They don't have the fear of the Lord, yet he has planted you to be the choicest wine. That's the reason why we ask you to come back and learn the word of God. That's the reason in Isaiah 66, 1 and 2, as well as we read the same Isaiah 54, 17 or 15. The one who trembles at his word. Earth is my footstool, heaven is my throne. Where will you prepare a place for me to rest? The one who is broken hearted, the one who has the fear of the Lord God in such a way, who trembles at his word, with him do I reside. But man, right from his birth, he says in Isaiah, right from the womb you are rebellion to God. Because of your old sin nature. You know, he has made us to be with God, God, to be his man. But we are right from the mother's womb, having the old sin nature in us. We are becoming to say like traitors, we are with Christ. But in return, we are traitors to Christ. Until you come back to the fear of the Lord God, tremble at his word and try to live a Zohar kind of life, not the Bios life. Not to live your life under the influence of the old sin nature. But to, live the inf but to live a life in the influence of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. You have been designed to be born again so that you shall no longer have to rebel against God. 
And that's the reason he has given us the godly parents to understand the importance of this life. The reason what we can look, how the parents could train you up to plant it, to, to get in and to get out of the teachings of heathen. And yet, dear brethren, we find man being still rebellion to the core. Even after believing in Christ, people are going on with the deeds of flesh by the arrogancy of the will of the mind in the spirit. The deeds of the flesh, they don't come back to learn the word of God. They have the arrogancy of the spirit, saying that we talk in tongues, we do miracles, we do this, we do that. And ultimately we find them, that they are not renovated in Christ. That they haven't learned Christ. Even till date. You know, that's the reason why God the Father, first having established peace with you, to say you are reconciled with Him. And to live a life of peace by being preserved from every distorted way. By making up your soul, not to depend upon the teachings of men, but to look upon the teachings of the right word of God. He preserves you. He shamers your soul. He shamers your evil ways. So that there is none, there is none that can touch you and destroy you. The peace which you can get from Christ. The God which you can get from the Lord of a God. So he says, do not fear, but only walk in truth. But we men... We go on to grieve, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. We go on to squelch, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. We go on to lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. And yet, God the Father comes up with grace to give you one more day. At least today you will reconcile back. At least today you will get back to the word of God. At least today you will understand the importance of the mind of Christ. At least today you will realize the truth in Christ. At least... At this very moment you may understand that we are not having any longer to be called the sons of God, the children of God, if we aren't been led by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Lord God doesn't lead them, those who are still soulish, flesh minds, carnal minds, are having to use the word sukikas and sarkikas kind of man. And how you can say you're still soulish? Because your priorities are not looking to understand day by day the demands of the word of God. Your priorities are what you look, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, what to do, like pagans. Your priorities are not yet to look the righteousness of God. Your priorities are not yet to understand that the moment we die now can we be before the presence of the Lord. That's why your thinking is still soulish. The thinking is still carnal. Be content with food. Be content with the clothing. What God would give, he said in 1 Timothy 6, it's enough. The rest of the days of your life, what you do, be happy in the word of God. Establish to be the greatest wine for Christ. Get much more fruit to the Lord of a God and do the will of God the Father. But he broke down, he said. They are not able to understand these four verses of ministry which he has planned for the, Jews in the, for the Jews in the past, in the Old Testament. The same thing what he has planted for us in the church right now. To be the branch of wines of the Lord. Why you have been suddenly broken down? Because you are still rebellion. As he said in Jeremiah 17, desperately wicked and sick. He teaches to us to eat the food what you eat, what you get, what you have found every day, but you are not eating it. You are not meditating on that. If we, would, if we would look upon the grace given by God and if we would assess ourselves or examine ourselves, are we walking like Christ in the rank given for us like an adult son? Are we executing the will of God the Father according to Christ, according to His demands? 
how much has been given for you and how much has been expected from you yet, but yet we haven't even budged an inch how much just look why will not Lord God the Father will break off your fences the same thing what Satan claims towards Job you have put a fence I cannot go through that so he says yes then let's look and examine and see I will give everything in your hand but I will not give his soul because the thinking shall not be corrupted his thinking is all the time upright for God but today our thinking is not renovated to be upright with God though we have been illustrated right from the time of Adam till to the last one in revolution to teach to be holy and pure wash your clothes every day with the word of God we have seen all the panoramic views but that time Job did not have Bible to look as we have today Job did not have the mentoring minister of Lord God the Holy Ghost to teach us as we have today but that he says every step of mine I haven't used it in vain if I have done such and such if I have been negligent to help others to the gospel of God you know what a great kind of a cursing he takes upon him even my shoulder blade of my bones to be cut off today you're not having that but since Job lived in such kind of an integrity he said Satan says a witness you have put a hedge for him there is nothing that we can break through that but why God our Lord is breaking your hedges today so that you can enter into an examination like Job proving your integrity that you are upright in the Lord or you have been left over into the hands of dissolution because your heart is desperately wicked and sick you don't love to renovate the standards of your teaching of your learning according to the mind of Christ is that the reason because constantly right from the beginning when God created man he made him to be trichotomous but he fell and became rebellion and right from the mother's womb till the day you born again you're rebellion and after you've been born again yet you're rebellion at the end of this life if anyone could assess himself can he say that he has read the Bible at least once they would say yes we read have you read the Bible upon your knees at least once they would say yes we read have you written the Bible at least once now they start to think have you written the Bible upon your knees at least once then what is the purpose of this life how could you have the hedge of the Lord how could you have the great shamir of God against every evil path and against your soul have you taken more care more love to protect the word of Lord God to live according to the mind of Lord God and execute the will of Lord God or have you been secretly enticed like the way how Eve was been beguiled by the cunning fables of Satha the reasons why God the Father is breaking up your hedges not to protect you but for destruction as the way how he said three years I've given enough time to repent once again the gardener pleads give one more year Lord I will dig it and dung it but no fruit then we'll cut off your every thought before you could be in your mother's womb and the day when you die on this earth he knows what it is he knows with what kind of a man he's dealing with he knows very well we are the men of traitors And in his love, in his grace, he comes up to give you a chance to repent. That's the way how John the Baptist starts his ministry, the way how Christ, O Lord of God, starts the ministry. Repent. Metanoia, change your thinking. Because the kingdom of heaven is at God, is at hand. Wake up. Though much has been given grace, they consider them to be the children of Abraham. He says God is able to raise greater children than this than you with these stones. Because stones are at least true. 
to be like the word of God as a witness to it. But you men are not becoming that. So what are the possible chances or reasons why your head just have to be broken up? Why no peace in your life? First of all, you are not believing in Christ if you are an unbeliever. Second, as a believer, if you haven't casted out the teachings of heathen out of your mind and planned the teachings of the word of God, you will not have peace. And all the days of this life you love to spend in vain glory. And you will not even worry that you are spending your time in vain glory because you don't love to spend your time in vain glory. All the days of your life. That's how simple it is, dear brother. You are spending your time in vain glory. You're not understanding that you're out of the hedge. The great call of Lord as a true wine. The great thinking of my Lord, which he has said, I have planted you, preparing room before the enemy. Every day I will give you the word of God if you have a desire to learn it. As he led 40 years by giving them every day the manna. And there was a time for it before the sunrise could come, if not it will melt off. The time what we learn, first priority number one, the word of God, then anything else. First give your time to God. But today men are happy, you know how they are going to spend the time, even till to the late midnight. Not early to bed, not early to rise. Even though they are going early to bed, love to spend time in the smartphones. TikToks, chats, WhatsApp, Instagrams, Facebooks. What the hell they're doing there? The valuable time which has to be purchased and given back every day before the sunrise could come. Give up your time, two hours, 40 minutes to guard the Father. Then look your day, how it will be blessed. Eh? How a great return it will be to you in your life with peace. But every day you rob from the Lord. And the ministers will come to say, Monthly once you pay the tithe, you will be blessed. And you will be happy. But you are not blessed in return, you are cursed not that. The replacements what these people they are trying to do. The substitutes what these men are trying to live. Hedges are gone long back. You may be thinking your hedges are not gone, but the word of Lord God is so clear your hedges have gone. He has broken up. So the psalmist is asking, Why, Lord, why have you broken up the hedges? Because he knew. Though he has given much and he expects much from us. This man were not able to meet like the integrity of Job, what Job was. And Satan claims over there, you have put a hedge. I cannot destroy him. Today we should wake up to put a hedge in our life. By making up our conscience clear towards God at any time he would look and, and search and find us out. He can find us out that we are worthy for his calling. He can find us out that we are really making up our life to the praise of his glory. Every time he looketh, he should say, these are righteous for me. So the life that we are going through... <clears throat> Because he knoweth the end from the beginning. He should have in us such kind of an absolute confidence as these are the people like the Rechabites who obeyed their father Jonadab. These are the people like the Zodakites who stayed faithful. These are the people who will always do the same thing like Apostle Paul when he said, I follow Christ, you follow me, imitate me. 
because Apostle Paul, the way when he has been come out from the experience of Damascus, he dedicated himself to be the bond slave of the Lord, to live a Zao kind of life. He dedicated to prove that he is being led by the Spirit of God. And Christ, our Lord, our God, should have that hedge upon our lives. As they would always think, a ray of hope, not the ray of progeny hope, what you can have to your family. Looking upon our lives on this earth, a ray of hope, and upon such no evil will attack, upon such no Manavism of the strategy of Satan will work out, but in return, in return, every believer who is living under the great hedge of the law to look and to say, These are my people, these are my witnesses, these have been beheaded for Christ, these are the glory of God, they would trample at every breath Satan under their feet. Why? Their conscience and their heart and their lives are clear true to the word of God. Such is the eternity, dear brother. As we witness truth over there, right now on this earth, it's a work for us to witness truth on this earth, to live the word of God in us. When you're living the word of Lord God on this earth, the same thing will reflect back for you in the heaven. So no need to worry. And since you are living such kind of a witness on this earth as well as in the heaven, God the Father would say, These are my beloved sons in whom I am pleased. Every believer has been entitled to be called as a beloved son of God. But why you want to break up your hedges? The reasons why you are breaking up your hedges and falsely searching for peace, falsely searching for your protection from the evil way. You know how silly stupid things the people in my country, India, do, though they're Christians. It has become a trend for them now to tie up a black thread on the left leg. <laughs> and if ever we ask, what is that? They would say, no evil influence should have upon them, so we tied a black thread. <laughs> But if you look their life, nominal Christians, not having the seriousness of this great plan of God, at God in His grace, gives them enough of time to repent and get back before He could break out that hedge, before He could make them that they are no longer under the protection of God. Because they don't have the word of God till they could reach God consciousness, till they could come to the fear of the Lord, till they could wake up and understand the true life in Christ. He protects them because He doesn't want them to die sin unto death. Though the parents fail to give them the fear of the Lord, God in His grace provides looking upon their heart because He loveth everyone with the same love. The one who does the will of God and the one who doesn't do the will of God, he comes up with the same love, same grace. The one who does the will of God, good fruit for master's use. The one who doesn't do the will of God, though he has produced the same love and grace upon them, they will be like thorns and thistles to be burnt off. But he comes up with the same love. But those who are close to him, day by day, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, They will be under the category of influence like Moses or Samuel. The same thing he writes in 1 John 3, again in, in John chapter 17. You do his will, whatsoever you ask, in his name you will be provided. He says for Moses and Samuel, though you plead, I will not agree with these people. And Moses comes up. Blot out my name if you are not saving these people. And Moses comes up with a great growth of his promotion. 
Lord, I have spent twice with you forty days and forty nights. I am not satisfied. Show me. I want to look at you once. But people today don't want to spend first forty days and forty nights with the Lord. Everyone has that equal privilege. He gives the same love as the soil which has been using the sunlight and the water. And if it has been properly protected, if it has been properly taken care, we find it is going to produce fruit for the master's use, fit for the master's use. And if the soil has not been properly protected, if it has been exposed with the same sunlight or the water and if it is producing thorns and thistles, that's what we find in Hebrews 6. It is not fit for the master's use. The same thing, God loveth the wicked. Lord God loveth the righteous with the same love so that they could repent. So that we, the believers in Christ, could shine forth as the light glory of God and show them the love of God, the grace of God. But we ourselves, being called to be under the hedge of God, rejecting the word of God, the mind of God, the thinking of Lord God, you yourselves, which have to be the light of God, which have to be the gospel of God, which have to be the purpose of God, you yourselves, when you are failed, when you have not learned, when you have not looked upon the importance of the mind of Christ. When you yourselves have failed, who would go to save the wicked? That's the reason he writes, Why have you broken down the hedges? Why have you removed them out from custody? You have chosen them to be the choicest wine. You have called them to be for each and everything as the demands of the word of Lord God could ask. You have made straight paths before the enemy. You have prepared the food before the enemy. You have given them to take deep roots. You have called them to fill the earth. You have planted them by casting out the teachings of Ethan. You have made them to be the hills which cover the shadow. You have made them to be the majestic ones in the Lord. You have made them much more than the most what they can even expect. You call them to be the streams of water which they could be for Christ. You have given them everything what a man can even imagine or think. And yet why Lord you have removed the hedges? Because your hearts are not right. Your hearts are not really enjoying the love of God. The love which has bestowed upon us, we should pay back with the essence of true integrity in our heart. But we are not paying it back. We are paying unto Him lies, hypocrisy. We are paying unto Him Grieving, squelching, waxing, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. The one who should be your guide. The one who should build you up. The one who should lead you. The one who should make you to be the will of God. Under the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. You should be trained. You should be conforming to the image of Christ. The one who should take care of you. The one who should produce in you the character of Christ. You're grieving him. You're squelching him. And you're not confirming to the image of Christ how you would be there for the work of God. And what a sad thing it is for us to know. That men on this earth have really by having their love upon the world the love upon the flesh, the love upon the sin, the devil. They don't love my Lord. If they would love my Lord, they would keep the commandments of God.
And yet God the Father comes up with grace to give you one more day. Yet he comes up to give you one more pastor teacher which is coming from the right hand of God the Father. In his grace he has provided you those men who would teach. Because he loveth you with such kind of an infinite love. He doesn't want you to die. He doesn't want you to perish. There is no joy when the wicked perishes to my Lord. It's a great pain for him. Ezekiel 31, 15, we read. As he said in John chapter 17, verse 12, son of perdition. Except the son of perdition, the scriptures might be fulfilled. There is no great joy for the Lord God at the cost of the wicked being perished because he paid for all his love. He gave for each and every one the same grace with Christ. He did it for each and for you and for me. Why? Because we have to come back now to confirm to the image of Christ. Till the last hope on the cross we could find the thief. Having to say, Lord, remember me when thy kingdom cometh. He gave him the grace privilege. And today for us, though he has given a chance till the day you die to believe in Christ, you are not believing. And we call ourselves to be believers having in this religion criteria or pie chart, if you would look, <coughs> in the world. Christians are more in the world. And calling to be Christians, you are not confirmed to Christ. Because you are not disciple Christians. And you by your own actions, you by your own thoughts, you by your own motivations behind your thoughts. You know what the word of Lord God records. Dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, you are breaking up your own hedges. God doesn't break his edge. Though we are faithless, he is faithful to keep his word. Keeping his word, he has kept the covenant with us, not to break it down. But why your hedges have been broken up? The logic is very simple, because you are not having true love towards my God. Just imagine a relationship between wife and husband. And the husband will realize that the wife was in not true love with, her, with him. She just acted. Or vice versa. What a pain it could be for them. That husband provided for her everything. Food, clothing, shelter. Everything. But her heart was not with her husband. She was occupied with some other one on this earth. And if the husband would come to know. That he wasn't being truly loved by her wife. It was only just for the sake that she has to be provided monthly. The demands and the court of what you call for her needs through him. And do you think you could call that to be a perfect marriage? The same thing is happening with my Christ. Christ our Lord, our God, being our husband, our provider, He's giving you everything. We being the church, the wife, our heart is not fixed upon Christ. We are saying we love Him with our lips, but our hearts are far away. If we would love Him, we would keep His commandments. His commandments are to become like the streams of living waters which could pass through you and you become not just the water of crop harvesting. But you have to be the water giving to each and every one. The gospel, the word of God to cleanse them and to present them perfect and complete in the will of God. The hedges are broken between us and Christ. He has called for us with a great purpose in life. The life that you can execute by the Spirit of God called to live, Zao life. 
but you're still concentrating upon the Bios life. Living in the Bios life influence your thinking to have peace. No, dear brother, you cannot. You will not have peace. The Lord shall preserve from all evil way. The Lord shall preserve your soul. Provided you are in Him. Provided you have put a hedge according to the teachings of the demands of the word of the law. Therefore, dear brethren, we look in Psalms chapter 121 beginning with verse number 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Because the word going out is what your every thought and word of God that goes. And the word coming in is what you have in the Aleph energy, the mind of Christ. From this time forth, even forevermore. Because he is our keeper. He is our shade. He is our right hand. He is the one who will protect us from the details of the sun and the details of the moon. He says in verse 6 of 121, The sun shall not smite thee by day, because you have the word of God, nor the moon by night, because he will make to be the men who love him with a true heart. His great banner, his great army, his great protector, as he says over there, do not think if I would pray to God, he would send twelve legions of angels. He's a great army with them who love to do the will of God. And is going to protect from the smite of the sun by day and by the moon by night. And he's going to have that great hedge with us. He loves to have that. That's the reason he gave his only begotten son for us. That whosoever believeth upon him shall never perish. He has provided for us the best. You can't even imagine, dear brother. What else he can do, he claims to that why. He did that good in the past of Isaiah. He did better and much more than that. He did the best for us. And what is that? He has given us the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost in our lives. He did the most for us. Dear brethren, don't waste your valuable grace of God in vain glory on this earth. He did the most. He did the best. It is what we the men have not recognized it. We the men have been still blinded in our eyes not to renovate the standards of our thinking. But having a great peace under his head, Satan also claims in the case of Job, he has been surrounded by that head. I cannot touch him, he writes in one jaw. Satan cannot even touch us. When you corrupt your thinking, when you fail to recognize the teachings of the mind of Christ, when you fail to understand the importance of this life according to the demands of the word of Christ, your hedges are broken out. What God the Father has called us to be and what we are ending up in this life, Not worried about your eternal death, not worried about your eternity, not worried about your second death, not worried to have your part in the first resurrection, not worried that your hedges are broken up. Dear brother, life is too short. Every believer is a precious asset to Christ. He created man for the challenge of Satan that he loves his creation. When 
Satan claimed, Your love, Lord, how would you put your own creation into the lake of fire? God made in reply to that love to say that he loves his standards of righteousness. He made us to be a little lower than the angels and prepared us for the battles of the Lord. So that now the same decision for the men who fail to execute the will of God, who fail to live their life according to the standards of the word of God, Since these men have failed to look upon the will of God and the mind of God, that is going to put you back if you have one more day in your life to learn the word of God. Till you die, you rebel. First warning, discipline. Then intensified stage of discipline. Then putting you up and in the sin unto death. Till that time you don't wake up. As he has put the reason for Satan to be into the lake of fire. So he knows your each and every motivation, your thought behind it. And how it is that you can be put into the lake of fire. Dear brother, don't waste your valuable prayers. Before God the Father could break up your hedges, wake up to learn the word of God. Wake up to know the mind of Christ and wake up to survive your life according to the demands of the Lord of God. Because it's a great pain for us to look in Psalms chapter 80 in verse 12. And he continues from there to teach. Why? Why have you parat? The twenty say, why have you broken down? And then furthermore we read over here, and is teaching the words of his truth. He claims, Why have you broken down our hedges so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? We have to continue that. The boar out of the wood doth waste it, and the wild beast of the field doth devour it. The means will be eaten up. And he says, Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and behold and visit this wine. And the vineyard which the right hand hath planted, and the branch which thou have made strong for thyself, it is burned with fire, it has been cut down, they perish at the rebuke of the countenance, at the panning faces of the Lord. Let the hand be upon the man of the right hand, upon the Son of Man, whom you made strong for thyself. Every true believer in Christ, you Sabian, who is living the Zaowe of life. So will not we go back from thee, quicken us, Kea, once again revive our lives, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Dear brethren, before you could know that our life is to be sent out like the branches unto the sea and the branches unto the river, if you still reject to get back why God the Father has planted you, why we are called to be the choicest wine in the course of John chapter 15, in that greatest discourse when he's teaching for us from the viewpoint of the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, in chapter 14 to lead us into all truth, in chapter 16 to reprove the world, and in the both chapters 14 and 16, we have this 15th chapter to be called as the wine of the law. And if you still fail to realize that and understand that this great life in Christ, you have been breaking up the bows, you have been breaking up the hedges, yourselves, Christ our Lord our God doesn't want to break it up. It is what you, by your own way of life, you are breaking up. By being indifferent towards the demands of the word of the Lord. By being all the time out of the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. And being indifferent to the demands of the word of the Lord. You are dying sinner to death. The things what we read over there in Psalms chapter 8. He said, the choicest wine planted by your right hand. The men pass by the monk. The fields of the beast, the beasts of the field, they devour us.
because the hedges have been broken up. You break up your own hedges and you still live under the influence of the flesh, not under the influence of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. So no peace, no preservation of your soul from the sunstroke, from the moonlight. By that we meant to say the teachings of the heathen who love to serve the things pertaining to their heart, the things pertaining to the strength of their hands. Dear brother, this is your life. And which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. How gracious and grateful our Lord our God is in planting and giving you every day the room to take deep root in the word of the Lord. And that you want to break up your hedges. You seemeth it fair for you, continue. If your conscience will church for you, that we shall not break our hedges, we have to build it back. Then take up your cross every day, follow my Christ, and learn the word of Lord God, and become to the praise of His glory and His grace through His word, in knowing the truth in Christ. Make a diligent search to have a witness like Job, to have a witness like Paul, not to be having a witness like the people of entire Israelites who failed. The Christ our Lord our God came to teach them what you're reading, how are you reading, how are you anaginesco that, what have you read when you asked the people, they never answered. So rather than being such kind of a life, wake up to the truth, and know the mind of Christ and learn the truth in the world. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head, board, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order of telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor, teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thon like a heart. all the word in season, not of sin, because the diamond from a witness is faith, you have been called. The number one diamond from a witness is in well infinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from a witness is our hearers. If the no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, then tear and the by witnesses and what is our work? The work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely, Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to understand the great hedge which you have put for us in our lives by reconciling us through your Son, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we could enjoy the peace of God in our hearts every day when we walk upon in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost on this earth, by fulfilling the demands of your word and living our life to the Zao standards and not the Bio standards. As many have been led by the Spirit of the Lord of our God, you have said we are your children. Help us, Father, not to break ourselves by our ignorance and arrogance, the hedges which are put for us, but rather to once again build back those hedges which are broken up and to walk in the power of your Spirit, to execute, to trample Satan under our feet, to say that if Lord God be with us, who can be against us? What a great plan you have put for a man on this earth to the wine. At all, Lord, people have destroyed it. Help us to teach the things according to their will in thy grace. In Christ, my Lord, Spirit, gracious name, we pray, Father, my Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and let and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name, we ask sovereign Lord. Amen.